Oh, and I'm so excited that you let me put my face back into your place. So listen, I need to tell you a little bit about the video that's coming up. Are you ready? Hold on, wait for it. Yeah, a little bit of a channel identification thing, if you will. So I want to tell you a little bit about these videos because the truth is, is that I have made tons of videos over the years and some of these have some really good content. And so I wanted to share them with you, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about them so that you would be kind in the comments and not ask me things like, well, why are you talking to people in the video, et cetera, et cetera. However, if you're in the vicinity of the comments section, now would be a great time for you to tap that subscription uh, button and tap that bell so you'll know when I'm putting out fresh content. But like I was saying, some of these videos have been shared with my Facebook group. Some of them have been shared with clients. Some of them have been shared with programs and I want you to have them. So do not rip me apart and say, Stephanie, you're giving us bootleg videos. No, I am not. I'm giving you videos with good quality content that may or may not have been previously viewed. Okay, now let's go. Well, it seems that I am a minute late. I tell you, it is so funny having two different times on my phone. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. Let me know. I hope I'm live. Okay, I'm live now. So maybe you caught all of that good stuff when I'm saying, oh, I'm late. I'm late for a very important date with you. So I'm so excited. And I wanted to go live at a later time than normal because I wanted to connect with some new people. So I look forward to getting to know you guys. I'm just going to check really quickly and make sure that we are indeed live. Ah, we are live. There's one person here. Hi, one person. How are you? My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie, and I would love to know your name and where you're coming in from. So let me know. Put it in the comments. Let me make sure that you can see my comments. I go live so much that this has become like my ritual. So let me know where you're coming in from. I want to see it. And actually, I'm going to hop on over to the main page just in case because I don't want to miss a thing. So let's see. Excellent, 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 excellent. Okay, perfect. We've got about 12 people in the room, 13. And so I haven't heard a peep out of any of you guys. So let me know where you're coming in from. I would love to know that. I would love to see you, well, see you. But I wanna get started because I feel like there's a lot of things to cover and you might have questions. And so today has been kind of a lazy day. So I'm, I'm doing the oversized shirt thing and my hair is up and you know, all those cool things that we do on a Saturday night. It is Saturday, right? Okay. So nevertheless, let me introduce myself. My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie and I am the lead coach at the firms, which is the relationship firm and the healing firm. So I spend most of my days somewhere juxtaposition between healing and healing relationships and relationships that need healing. So I got a ton of certifications, everything from, um, what is it, sleep science to meditation to mindfulness to, of course, life, relationship, and bereavement. Oh, God, what else? Mental health, first aid. I mean, pretty much I'm one of the few coaches in the world who has the capabilities, not just uh, from the certification side, but from the from the from the experiences that I've had as an entrepreneur, my marketing background, working with you know mega brands, Chicken Soup for the African American Soul, Lisa Nichols, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, maybe you've heard of that guy, Destiny's Child, a little group, maybe you've heard of them as well, and uh, so I bring all of that to my clients, all of it. So like I said, I'm one of the few coaches in the world that can literally walk you through a transformation of your entire life, head to toe, inside and out, life, love, and money. So let's get into this. Because the one thing that I am ravenous about is healing, and I feel like as, as entrepreneurs and owners, I love the term owners, I hate the term boss, I don't, I don't even know why that's popular anymore, but um, because you can be a boss and not be an owner, but you are an owner, so the owners are here. You guys are awfully quiet. Thank you for that emoji, love. I want to know if you're here, so drop me an emoji, drop me a, a nice gif, let me know that you're here, say hello, let me know if you're here from a particular city or place. I'm actually going to turn the volume up on this just to make sure that I am live. 
Okay, we have sound, so I feel good about that. Okay, my lovelies. Well, I want you to grab your journals. I want you to grab, I see that emoji love. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. I want to see some words though, guys. Let me know. What do you do? Are you a coach? Are you a business owner? Um, do you have an online boutique? What do you do? I would love to know more about you guys. Anyway, I'm going to get into this. I see your emojis flying. I feel pretty good. We've got good sound and that I can get started in my lazy sweater doing my lazy Saturday night thing with my new friends. So if you get inspired during the, um, I hate to say the presentation, but if you get inspired while I'm talking and you want to connect, check the description. All kinds of information is in there. If you have to run before we get done, then it's already there. So you can click any link you want to and we can stay connected. All right, so let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to hear from you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and get this party started. All right, so the first thing that I really want to get into as we look at if love and light is, is an enemy to your success is the first thing, and I actually have notes, so I have to look over here at them. You know, what wants to push you forward and what wants to hold you back? Now, I know people always have the same answers to these questions, right? Okay, well, this is... This is holding me back and this is pushing me forward. And I'm like, well, it may not be as easy as you think that it is. Because I truly feel like one of the things that may be holding us back is success. And you're like, how can success hold me back from success? Well, you know, there's a thing that happens, and I always go back to the scene in Rocky, where Mick is talking to uh, Rocky and he's saying, you know, you're not, you can't handle fighting Mr. T and he's like why I've been defending my title and defending my title and he's like uh yeah about that and so he said the worst thing that has that could happen to a fighter happened to you you won and when you won that changed everything you lost your hunger you lost your desire you started to train differently because now you're the champ and so one of the things that could be holding you back is success I know Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Well, what do you do about that? Well, we allow ourselves to get uncomfortable because one of the things that wants to push us forward is discomfort, complete and utter discomfort. And if you've been uncomfortable over the last six months, then by all means, drop me, drop me an emoji, drop me a smiley face, drop me something, um, drop me your favorite emoji. My favorite emoji is, uh, is the super, super emoji. I don't even know if I can put that in there. Can I put that in there? Let me see. I can. That's one of my favorites. So I'd love to know your favorites. We have about 35 people in here. I don't see not one comment, which is leading me to think I may not be seeing comments. Let me see what's going on. Let's see. I'm going to refresh. Because that is super concerning to me. I can see emojis, but not see comments. That's so super weird, unless they're over here. Let's see. Because I've done these before, and then I looked up in there. Okay, hey, Carla. Okay, so I can see something from Carla. Coolio. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I think we're golden. I'm just going to stop being paranoid about it, because I've seen emojis. I see comments. Carla's giving me a comment. Hey, Alicia Monique is here. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. So like I said, one of the things that wants to hold you back is your past successes. And that's because it, when we get, when we have successes, sometimes we get complacent. Sometimes we get comfortable. And what really wants to push us forward is discomfort. And like I said, if you've been uncomfortable over the last six months or so, drop me an emoji. Let me know that it's real because I think we all have. I think, you know, I was talking with a young lady yesterday and she was convincing me that she was trying to convince me that this was the time that people were not doing well. You know, everybody's struggling financially. I'm like, that is so not the narrative. I've had the best months in my business ever during the pandemic and i'll tell you i'm going to uh beat my numbers last year this month 
that's what's going to happen. So my income for the entire year last year, I'm going to hit in September with three with three months to spare. And so I'm super excited about that. I really, truly am. So she's trying to convince me, you know, that this is the time for things not to happen. And I'm like, no, this is the thing for this is this is this is when we thrive. Right. Now, I get it, you know, being in a pandemic is quite the bummer. And yeah, it can absolutely be very uncomfortable. But I will say to that, that if you allow the, the discomfort to push you forward, to fuel your fire, you know, not drain your battery, but fuel your fire, um, I, think you'll be, I think you'll be better for it. And that may mean baby steps, but listen to me, baby steps are still steps. So we can't keep acting like vilifying is the word I love to use is you can't keep acting like baby steps are not steps because they are but the other things that want to pull you back are your woundings and your past hurts and your ego and your ego is probably screaming really loudly right now and it probably is saying things to you that are steeped in fear and guilt and blame and shame because it knows that you're vulnerable it knows that you've been going through this pandemic and even if your business is thriving you know, you're dealing with um, seeing, seeing the news, you're dealing with taking in all this information, all this energy, like literally these are hashtag empath problems. So when you're looking at what wants to move you forward, the first thing that we, that we have to juxtaposition is our wounds versus our worthiness. And so next Saturday, the next two Saturdays, I'm actually going to be doing a workshop about wounds and worthiness because it matters. It matters so much in the life of an owner people who are building businesses um this is this is something that you got to get hey kasana hey zip so this is something that you got to get into your life because i promise you that the way you run your business when you are whole when you are when you have dealt with your wounds when you are operating from a state of worthiness is vastly different from the way that you operate it when the wounds are yelling and, and they're not letting you price appropriately and they're making you feel like you have to people please and they make you feel you have to bend over backwards and they make you feel like everything is going to close in and collapse on you if you don't do this, this one thing right now. And that's no way to live. It's just no way to live. Okay? So I'm going to be doing that workshop in the next, over the next two weeks. So the next two Saturdays, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be doing it in here. So if that's of interest to you, by all means, comment workshop. Because I want to make sure that I let you know when it's happening. I'll probably do another event uh, much like this one. Okay. <clears throat> so I promise I'm getting there. We're getting there to the love and light piece. But I want to build this up for you guys. All right. So we move into, you know, once we look at what's holding us back and what wants to push us forward. And we decide, you know what, I don't mind being uncomfortable. That's cool. I can be uncomfortable. I'm fine with it. And in that discomfort, I'm finding my way. I'm finding my way forward. I'm finding my way out. I'm finding my way. I'm just finding my way. Sometimes that's what it's about. But I'll tell you, you know, a lot of people talk about visualizations and affirmations. And listen, I'm, I'm certified in mindfulness and meditation. And I even created my own system called Noga Method. And so what Noga does is that it combines movement, flexibility training, which I'm also certified in, and uh, meditation. So I am a huge believer of mirror work and, and, and mindfulness and meditation and affirmations. But I'm going to tell you the truth. And, and the reality is there are some visualizations that some of us don't want to do. We just don't. And I'm going to tell you what they are because I, I know you want to know. So if you guys, if this is resonating with you at all, drop me a comment. Let me know. Say hell yeah. Say something. Uh, wave at me. Do something. I thank you. I'm so thankful for you guys that are here and that are chatting a little bit. So I love that. And uh, for those of you who catch this live, definitely hashtag live. But if you catch it on the replay, hashtag replay, because we love you just as much. Big hearts. All right, so the visualizations are super powerful. You know, once you're in that, that, that uncomfortable place and you're okay with it and you want to grow in it and you want to thrive in it. But you know what? There are some visualizations we don't want to do and I want to tell you about them. Because, you know, for the longest time I would, I would teach clients about, you know, I, I love the construct of, of walking in wholeness and abundance. And, and for the record, you can have abundance and, and you can have money and not have abundance. They are two different things. But uh, we'll get into that later. But, 
you know, I've, I've had clients do the visualization where white light is coming down on them, where they're, you know, visualizing whole fields of money and yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing. There are some visualizations that some people don't want to do. And the first one usually is around the condition of their heart space. See, it's really easy for us to act as if, hmm, I'm doing okay, I'm good. But do we really know? Do we really know? Yesterday I was doing some, 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 some spiritual work and I, I decided to get brave and ask if I was doing the right things to heal myself and allow those answers to come to me because, because they would. Am I on the right track? Do I need to press more into my root chakra? Do I need to press more into my sacral? And so I literally just went up my body into my chakras, every chakra, every chakra. And the truth of the matter is we have more than 20 chakras, but we only deal with seven. But um, I wanted to ask that. I wanted to know, is there, is there a place in me that I can do more work for, that I can, that I can put more emphasis into healing, where maybe I haven't done my best work in healing myself. And so I wanted to do that. And those are the things, those are a lot of times the visualizations we don't want to do. If you if you guys do visualization or meditations, just put yes in the comments. I would love to know that. So I am I'm I'm loving how quiet you guys are, not really. But we'll chalk it up to you being busy on a Saturday night and you're just listening to me ramble a little bit. Another visualization that we may not want to do is around blockages. Hey Kylian and wanting to see what's, what's blocking me. Because it's so easy to get caught up in the love and the light, and we're gonna to get to that in just a minute. It's so easy to get caught up in the love and the light, and, and let's be positive, and let's do these affirmations, and let's meditate on abundance, and I vibrate with the frequency of money, and I vibrate with the frequency of wealth, and I, vi and I vibrate with the frequency of blah, 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 blah. But the truth of the matter is, is that that's really cute to say, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't line up. Now, oddly enough, Kylie is here and she was speaking about this very thing earlier this week. Is that a coinky dink? No, no, because I don't believe in coincidences. This is alignment. This is complete alignment because thank you. Thank you so much. My esthetician is on here. Uh, she, she, can she can attest to that. Thank you so much, Tony. Good to see you, my dear. I want an update by the way. So what I want, what I want us to do is, is to, when we, when we accept discomfort, we're not just accepting discomfort in the natural. We need to try to get uncomfortable in the, in the supernatural, in the spiritual. Look at some of those, those meditations that we're like, I don't know that I want to do that. Mm, that seems a little heavy. No, because we, we, we want to make sure that we're lining up with what we're, what's so easy for us to say. Because there's a reason I, I originally titled this, you know, visualizations and affirmations for your success. But then I thought about it because I'm like, there's a lot of people who are saying things and it's not happening. And we've got to work on that. And now I'll be honest with you, uh, tomorrow in my group at 6 p.m., I will be talking about why your uh, affirmations and visualizations may not be manifesting a doggone thing. I, I, I'm going to talk about that. And so if you're interested, by all means, comment group. And we'll make sure you get the information or check the description box uh, because that information is already there. But we, we want to be willing to get uncomfortable in the supernatural because that's where our healing is. That's where we find the wounds that are in our soul. That's, that's where healing is. Healing is not some superficial, oh my gosh, I'm great now and I'm, getting, I'm going on with life. Well, that's incongruent. And when we're incongruent, we're out of alignment. And when we're out of alignment, it's not long before our head, our heart, and our hands, because our hands do the work. Our heart is, is our heart space, which is where love and money flow from. And then our head is our mindset. So as, as, as easy as it is to get out of alignment, think about what happens when these three things are also out of alignment. So that means you might be continuing to do work that no longer serves you. You might be continuing to do work that you're not called to do anymore. But because you're unwilling to, to get uncomfortable in the supernatural, you're only willing to accept discomfort in the natural, then you don't know that. 
So if anything I said makes sense to you guys, if, if you got that, if you if you got it, send me send me something. Say I got it. You know, send me something and say you got it. Cause I'm gonna keep moving. Cause this time goes really fast. But I love being here with you guys. And like I said, I know it's late at night, so some of you might be snuggled down and not even touching your phones, and you're like. Dang it, Stephanie, I want to comment, but this blanket feels so good. Oh, my God. So at the end of the day, I completely understand. So feel free to drop your comments and your emojis later. So that's, that, that, that's fine with me. No love. No love lost. It's all love. All right. So you came here probably because of the topic. And the topic saying, is love and light the enemy to your success? And so in these things, I've kind of built a little bit of a foundation as far as, okay, let's look at what's pushing you, what's, what, what's wants to push you forward, what's holding you back. And so what's pushing you forward, your soul, your discomfort, surprisingly, and, and a need to feel worthy. And, and not just worthy of, but just worthy because. Worthy in the doing not, is not worthiness. Worthy in the being, the being of you is worthiness. And what may be holding us back is the wounds and the past hurts and our ego. And none of that is surprising until we get to success. And success might be holding you back. Your prior successes might be holding you back. And so now we take the visualizations. We recognize, if we want to, we recognize that it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's cool. It's good for me. I like discomfort. I really don't, but I'm going to say that because I'm willing to not just accept discomfort in the, in the natural context, but also into a supernatural context. And that is when I shift my visualizations into something that's like, hmm, let's go deeper. I'm not just visualizing money coming towards me. I'm not visualizing it falling down on my head. I'm not visualizing stepping in uh, money and, and green. And I'm not just visualizing that, right? I'm not visualizing my, my, my signature client coming. I'm not visualizing because I take my clients to a sensory exercise where they literally go from what they see, what they taste, what they touch. So all the senses in the experience of working with them as they're crafting who they serve. You know, I believe in a serving statement. And so uh, sometimes when I'm working with clients who want to launch, uh, we'll go through that exercise. So I get it. But we now, because we embrace discomfort, we're looking at visualizations that aren't as comfortable, that aren't as love and light, that aren't as positive, but may be more uh, valuable to where we desire to go and what we desire to see. And so that'll lead us into looking at the condition of our heart, to looking at the chakras that may be in need of attention, looking at blockages that may be holding us back and hindering us because the answer to the question, is love and light the enemy to your success? The short answer is yes. Yes, it absolutely is the enemy to your success because sometimes, well, only if, no, sometimes, I'm going to say sometimes because I never, I, I never like to use a swimming generalization. Many times, there we go. Many times we're engaging in love and light as a display of, of toxic positivity. Because we haven't grown to understand that discomfort is for our good. We haven't grown to embrace the lessons that we can learn when, when certain feelings come into us. I've been, I've been working with clients for over a decade. And lately, uh, all of them have a lot of feelings. Yes. And I tell them every time, your feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid. I, I literally ha should have play a recording, your feelings are valid, you know. But I also believe that feelings come to teach. Feelings come to teach. They come to get our attention. And, they, and, and the challenge is embracing them, allowing them to teach us, but don't let them linger beyond the lesson. That's the overall challenge. And so, like I said, a lot of my clients right now, they have a lot of feelings. And what I don't want to do is push them into, you know, the toxic positivity of love and light. Uh, okay? But you may not feel love and light. So what do we do with this darkness? Does this darkness have value? Well, of course the darkness has value because the darkness, the shadow, if you will, is you. Every part that shows up is you. Your feelings are you. 
And as I said earlier this week, when you reject those feelings because you don't want to deal with them because you haven't embraced the value of discomfort, you reject you. And as someone who is an advocate for relentless, actually savage, but relentless self-love and self-care and who recognizes that the way we love ourselves and the level at which we love ourselves, it, it automatically impacts the way we are loved by others, um, how we are paid, if we are paid, and how we are seen overall. So I am, I am voracious about making sure that your love level, if you're a client, or if, or if I just know you, that your self-love level stays high. And that's a challenge for a lot of people. And so in order to do that, you've got to love all of it. It's not just about the light. It's about the shadow. It's about the dark. It's about those things that make us uncomfortable. It's about those feelings that are tethered um, to things that we haven't dealt with yet. Oftentimes I will tell clients, you know, we have to trace the trigger to the truth. That's one of uh, classes in our foundations program. And so when, when new clients come in, they automatically go into foundations and they learn the principles of, of, of working with me, so to speak, and they work with our foundations coach. And then they work with me on what we call level two. And uh, in that process, uh, a lot of feelings come up. One of my clients said, oh my God, I thought I was just gonna be able to watch these videos and do these exercises and it was gonna be okay. She's like, "Woo!" There was work that had to be done. And she began to set boundaries out of that space that she had never set before in her life. And that is so meaningful, but it's also not love and light because there's a reason why we haven't set those boundaries. There's a reason why, why, why we haven't press into those feelings, feelings of sadness, feelings of hurt. Oftentimes, we will emote sadness as mad, as anger. Can y'all relate to that? If you can relate to that, drop me an emoji, let me know. Drop me some emoji love and let me know that it's real because if you've ever been sad and you, and you acted as if you were mad, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because many times we want to stay in control. And sadness is one of those feelings that doesn't give us control. When we become sad, we might cry. God forbid these, 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 these eyeballs have water running out of them. Oops. And that's a huge part of, of healing. That's a huge part of accepting that this thing hurt me. And, and, we're, and we get hurt because we're, we're human. We get hurt because we had expectations and they weren't met. But to, but to say to the hurt, yeah, hurt, I don't, I don't want to be bothered with you. We just simply reject ourselves. And so, like I said, the short answer to the question is yes, because toxic positivity wants you to be positive all the time. It's like, wee, positive, yes. It doesn't matter what's going on. And I'm saying to you that sometimes it sucks. And you got to say, you know what, this, this sucks. This is, this is some bull. You can say that. And you don't have to worry about your vibration falling. You don't have to worry about being a bad person. Oh, maybe you're not nice. Maybe you're not positive. Good vibes only. Yeah, we, we don't do that here. We embrace all of it because all of it is relevant to where we're going. And when we don't do that, we're lacking transparency. The, the person that we should always be the most transparent with is right here. Never lie to the chick in the mirror. She does not like it. She just doesn't. So never lie to her. Be honest with her. And if that means in your honesty you end up in a, in a puddle of tears, then you just end up in a puddle of tears. And that is okay. All of your feelings are valid. Now, they may not be valuable to your overall plan, which is why we don't let them linger beyond the lesson. So, and I talk a lot about this stuff a little bit more in, in my group, um, Capeless, Fearless, and Ready to Shift, and you can get more information on that if you'd like. But the other thing that it does is that it misaligns us. And as I've told you, we want our head, our heart, and our hands to always be aligned. We always wanna be doing work that we're called to do that is meaningful. We always wanna do that. So. Nevertheless, that's the simple answer to the question, does love and light, is love and light the enemy to your success? So I'm open for questions. Um, I definitely want to tell you a few things about what I have going on. 
Um, this has been a new one. For the last couple of weeks, I've been doing some intuitive coaching, and so I've been really excited about that. So those of you who have been here for those sessions, I, I would love an update. That would be great. Um, but if you want to stay connected, which I would love it if you would, there's a few ways to do that. Um, I do have a group, my new group. I uh, closed down a few groups and decided to start over with fresh energy. And so we have about 70 plus members in there, and it's called Capeless, Fearless, and Ready to Shift. So if you're interested in being a member, by all means, comment Capeless. We will get that information to you and make sure that you get in. The other thing that you can have tonight completely free. I call it my 100 million percent free training because um, I am super committed to you having the skills to drop the cape and, and be great. My entire platform literally is about being your own superhero, which means that you stop rescuing, fixing, and, and enabling other people. You stop, you stop caping for them and you start caring for you. And you start caring for yourself in a way that is relentless. It is filled with relentless self-love. It is filled with healthy boundaries. It is not filled with toxic positivity. So I am relentless about that. I actually wrote a whole book about it and it came out yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, it came out on the 10th and it's called, guess, guess what? Be your own superhero, colon, no capes, exclamation point. And so that's available on Amazon. So from what I hear, it's a pretty stellar book. I, uh, I've had a few people read it and they said they literally did it in one sitting. And so I would love to get that into your hands. If you're interested in that, you can comment book. And then let's see, lastly, if you love this video, imagine what it's like to spend 20 minutes with me on an empowerment call. And I would be so excited to uh, get to know you in that way. And so you can always book an empowerment call. If you're interested in a call, comment call and we will get that information to you as well. Uh, when I say we, I have a team uh, because I cannot do this alone. This work is major. And the people that I work with, I'm so privileged to be a part of their journeys and uh, to help them heal, shift, and be their own superhero. So I am super excited about getting to know you guys. I, like I said, I wanted to go uh, at a later time because I thought, you know what? Let's see what the people on the West Coast might be doing. Yeah, that whole orange sky thing. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so not good. But, you know, I figured 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific might connect with some new people. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but, yeah, like I said, anything you want from me, a call, if you want information about the book, if you want information about the group, if you want to get your hands on my free training, you can go over to SuperHeroShift.com and you can grab that right now. It is literally no dates, no wait. You can start it tonight. But uh, nevertheless, I'm, I'm so excited I had a chance to share with you guys. I hope something that I said resonated with you and will help you along your journey because that's really what matters to me. Um, yeah, I'm going to close this up. My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie, and I am the lead coach at The Firms. And uh, in all things, from the bottom of my very capeless, uh, very healing, very non-toxic positivity having soul. I want to thank you guys for loving and learning with me. Have a beautiful night and let's stay connected. Bye.